Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Community Fortress. This is one by me. Uh, so this is something people have asked me to do. It's like if there's a fort that you're particularly happy with, throw it into this playlist. Do a little fortress tour. So this is my fortress of Heatstone. Now, Heatstone is a Let's Play that you may, or a live stream series, I guess, that I've been doing on this channel for the past... Uh, month practically as well as streamed on twitch twitch.tv slash blindirl and I, i've had a number of people ask me to do this one as a fortress tour on the in this series now earlier in this series you might remember i did one of water lungs which was another fortress i was equally happy with by the time i finished it so this is the final version of this here save file now normally what i would say in this show is if you would like to have a fortress shown on this show simply jump into my discord server go to the df save sharing room and upload your fortress i finally caught up we're base i've got like three more forts to record because a couple people sent in forts but uh, we are basically out of fortresses so if you would like to get your fortress shown probably in the next week and a half now's a good time to send it in but for this particular episode uh we're going to be kind of rolling through my fort and i've got a special treat for you down in the link of the in, in the link in the description of this video uh there is a dffd link which is the dwarf fortress file depot i've actually uploaded this particular save file there where you can go check it out if you wish or alternatively dive into this world and go do your own shenanigans maybe you would like to take over toe thief because i clearly failed it However, uh, as far as just housekeeping goes, future for this series uh, and for this world, I've, I've already started a new fortress in the same world, actually kind of up over here in this area. And that will be commencing over the next couple of weeks to, to month on the YouTube channel and Twitch. But... Let's do a real quick tour. So this area claimed to not have any trees or very sparse, but as we played, these cacti just kept growing everywhere, which was kind of crazy. Um, this It's this black sand desert biome and a volcano. Um, but what we did with the entrance was quite fun. So if I scroll up here a little ways, uh, don't mind the dead dwarf there. They they fell asleep after working and uh, never woke up. It's a, it's a real sad story. Uh, we have these lovely statues uh, at the entrance. Now, uh, something that I learned is that uh, apparently were creatures can get caught in stat but in cage traps, and they really like to knock over statues. So the were creatures run up, bonk the statues, and then get caught in the cage traps. It's quite useful. We have this multi-tiered kind of entryway, which goes up over this cool lava puddle just for aesthetics, no actual practical use. Some more statues, including things like giant tortoisemen and uh, many statues of the great Ilana Hollowvine. I don't know what's up with this particular dingo. She did nothing of note. Uh, never really, like, did anything worth mentioning. However, apparently is noteworthy enough to be, like, one in ten statues. Like, there's another one right there. It literally settled in the True Dune in the year seven. That was the only thing of note she ever did. There's another one, there's another one, there's another one. I don't know what's up with Alana Holovine, but this is our entryway to the fortress. We've got these mica walls and schist block floors. There's a vampire who lives in here who was training, who I was kind of planning on sending out as a military dwarf to go take over something at some point, but never ended up happening. Then as we move over top of this upper walkway, we have the first visitor's tavern up here, uh, which is the Granite Olive, a rather large setup, which has this little minecart rail, which is apparently forbidden, I don't know why, which brings alcohol and food from down there up and through to here. I can unforbid that. That's odd. Um, and then down here we have uh, our trade depot. The traders, of course, come up and trade. One layer above, we do have this lovely set of um, pumps, which is uh, producing a lot of mist for this whole region right here. So all the way along here, down through uh, those vents, and then all the way along up there, it produces mist. Now we have a couple of barracks here, as well as our lever room. And then right here is office for Captain of the Guard. Uh, this walkway then goes down and then into the actual fortress itself with this lovely kind of spherical room space. Um, this episode is also going to be going up on the same day that the finale of this fort series goes up. So if the VOD went up today, go check out the VOD. Like may maybe it'll interest you. Maybe you'll see some cool stuff that in, in the final fort day. Um, but if you want to see this entire fortress built from the ground up, literally go back to episode one. It was uploaded about a month before this and uh, has, like, the entire history of this fortress in, uh, you know, 17 episodes, I think? A lot of hours, however. They're, they're like, six to nine hours or so. Uh, so we have this lovely entryway, and one of my goals for this fortress, and many of my fortresses, actually, is to make my bedrooms feel kind of like they do in the procedurally generated forts that um, happen in the overworld. So we have this kind of scattered bedroom design like this. And then if I move up a layer, we have many staircases that are going up and down, and this little walkway over here to the side with more statues going through. We had an absolute surplus of gold in this fort, so 
all of these statues are made out of gold. And then if we move down a layer, there's an equal number of bedrooms just kind of scattered about the place, and you can tell who's important and who is not. Um, and then as we move back up, we've got a few temples around the space, and apparently I never got rid of that meeting zone. And then down here is kind of our main furniture crafting spot. Right up here, of course, we have the Brock of Oiling, a stoneworker's guild. One of the challenges I did for this fortress is the difficulty was set to hard, and the uh, enemy uh, limit was set to a thousand instead of 200, which it normally is set to. Another thing that we did with this particular fortress was we set the economy to hard. So that's why you're seeing so much gold and stuff everywhere. What economy to hard does is it makes requirements for trading and requirements for um, uh, things like guild halls and temple requests significantly higher value. So you really have to kind of go all out, I guess. Over here we have our hospital, and surrounding the hospital is a guild hall for doctors. So we have some, uh, most of the dwarves in this fort are at the very least practicing doctors. And then we have a few injured dwarves because there was some fights that happened. Over here we have another guild hall. This is the metalsmith's guild. We have some office spaces. And then if we move down this way, you'll notice this dwarf who's locked in here. Well, they're a were-creature. They turn into a were-lizard once a month. It's kind of a sad story, really. In fact, if I leave it unpaused, you might see them. And then down here we have our um, our throne rooms. Uh, this one apparent, unfortunately passed away, so uh, they're no longer with us. However, we do still have the king, myself's uh, throne room. It's glorious, frankly. I, anyone would envy it. Then here we have our main kind of um, metal industry. Um, as well as the rest of our metal industry. It started off as kind of a goldfish, and then I added a circle to the bottom so people stopped calling it a goldfish. Up here we have a craft dwarf shop, and uh, we've kind of finished out that little circle there. If we move down a little bit, this area never got quite cleaned up with all the obsidian because it was one of the later additions to the fort, but this is our glassworks industry. Now, all of these are powered by this uh, volcano here, and the lava just kind of flows through. Um, and this is a stockpile for sandbags. Um, they clearly have just filled up every single bag in the entire fortress with sand over the past year or so. Um, up here there is a real big stack of sandbags. They get thrown into the, into the minecart, and then um, I learned as part of this fortress that minecarts actually become invisible when they have sandbags in them. Funny that. Look at that. Ain't that amusing? It's like sandbags and then lava are the two things that I've found that make sandbags go invisible when uh, there's items in them. And anyway, that just kind of comes all the way up here, eventually works its way up to here, and then um, kind of goes here and then dumps right there. Right here we have a siege workers workshop, and if we keep working up this way, we have um, the, 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 the Flute of Trade, as well as the Artifact of Mirroring, two separate guild halls. We have a Clothers Guild, as well as the Weaver's Guild. And then right here we have the final tap or one of the final taverns that I built in this fortress, which has a few dwarves visiting and hanging out. This one does also permit guests, just like the one up top up here. I kind of was planning on connecting the two, but it never really happened. Um, down here we have a beak dog breeding program and an ostrich breeding program. Um, and if we move up a little bit, we have some various other fowl that ended up in the fort. And then here is how I did my nobles' bedrooms. Or not bedrooms, uh, uh, tab tables. So, uh, dwarves that need... Um... Oh, I just realized my wife died. Oh, that's sad. Uh, <laughs> anyway, right, or, or rather, King's wife died. Um, that's sad. So this is where I was putting Baron's bedrooms, and it turns out one of them died. So anyway, um, or tables, not bed. Dining rooms, that's the word I was looking for. Up here is another, yet another uh, tavern, which is, uh, again, kind of... Um, just not no visitors allowed in this one it's just a large tavern up here we have some artifacts as well as our books uh we do actually have some original works in here alongside of um many many books and copies that we've stolen from various people who didn't want them anymore because they weren't reading them anyway and then down here is the uh like main temple of the fortress that was requested over here we have uh one final barracks which has two squads assigned, and yet another guild hall. And then we have one of my favorite features of the fortress, the defensive structure. So down here is this very long bridge, which is mighty epic, goes over top of this lava pit. We have all of these obsidian drawbridges powered by obsidian mechanisms for draining, because above this pit is, um, well, this. All of this lava. 
This lava then dumps down into the pit when uh, a lever is pulled. So I have a lever that I can pull, which will fill this entire thing up with lava. And of course, if you would like to witness that, uh, there's many videos on this channel of this thing operational. It is quite effective. And then over uh, on this side for fun, we added in some ballista as well as minecart shotguns. I do have a tutorial on this channel on how to make these. They're pretty simple, uh, and I will actually fire this one off for you right now. So, uh, if you give me a moment, we'll be right back and fire this shotgun. So after a long, long wait, this dwarf right here just seems to be ready to pull the lever. They are now walking over to the lever, and I'm going to pause, and what we're going to do is we're going to jump back over to the bridge. So I've got these three carts ready to fire. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the one in the middle, and I'm going to grab one of these discs, and we are going to follow it. Then I'm going to unpause the game. Now what's going to happen is this is going to drop. These uh, rollers here are going to fire them off, and that happens. So that is a minecart shotgun, which we just completely obliterated um, my mayor with. Uh, well, fortunately, uh, this is in a different timeline uh, from ones that I'm taking seriously, so I guess we got a new mayor. Anyway, uh, with all that aside, that's how a shotgun works. It's kind of fantastic, isn't it? Now, if we move down a few layers, uh, we can see that this is where all my storage is for stuff to be melted down, as well as various other materials, and we can start moving down. So we do have another minecart route, or that other minecart route there, which we saw earlier, and we can move down, we can go down through various things that we've mined out. And then down here, we have our power. Now, our power is coming from this heavy aquifer over here that I channeled into in a bunch of spots, which is then flowing down this way and we are powering it with these water wheels down beneath here we have of course the normal farming accoutrements as well as another dining hall for space and uh, some millstones as well as a couple of farm plots we of course have a large thing for seeds as well as leathers and threads and then we have angry ramen down here now angry ramen is very angry angry ramen sprays webs at uh, these beak dogs for us in exchange for um permanent residency in the fortress. I, I don't think it's willing residency, but it is permanent residency. So fortunately, Ramen here does get permanent residency, and I'm sure Ramen is eternally grateful for the per permanent residency, you know, uh, even though the beak dogs don't really appreciate it so much. Um, of course, this lever locks this door and lowers this drawbridge, and then later unlocks this door and raises this drawbridge, uh, and it's far enough away that it doesn't kill the beak dogs, but does give us plenty of silk. Then we can go further down, at which point you won't see too much else down here. Just some uh, areas that I have locked off because there is a forgotten beast made of steel out here, which is um, not pleasant. So we just pretend it doesn't exist. And then we can move down a little further, a little further, a little further, a little further, and a little bit further. And then we can go down a little further, a little further, a little further. At which point you'll meet our other noodle, um, who I never really got around to doing anything with. Grubby. Grubby. Grubby lives here. Also sprays webs. So are the unholy. Um... Sodar the Unholy is a grub. And uh, this is as deep as we've gone in this fort. And obviously I haven't gone any deeper with no real intentions of going deeper because that wasn't the goal of this fort. The goal of this fort was simply to get the king and survive with the ludicrous difficulty standards of enemy sieges set up to a thousand and uh, not, you know, sort of dealing with the hard economy. If you want to download this save file and mess around with these toys yourself, you can do that via the link in the description of this video. And if you would like to watch the full series of Heatstone, or at the very least, skim through it tentatively, uh, there is a link to that as well. Uh, apologies to my mayor. Uh, I will be exiting without saving, and so uh, you will not die this way in any other timeline. Who got who got mayor after him? Uh, Merlin buff. Well, congrats for you, dwarf. First jewel. Very important religious dwarf to this fortress. If you would like to see more videos like this, check out this YouTube channel. There's a huge playlist of these, and people seem to really like them. And I'm going to keep making them, damn it, as long as people keep sending me forts. So if you would like to get a fortress shown on this show, join the Discord and jump into the DF save sharing room and just simply copy what everybody else is doing. And if you would like to support me or the stuff I do directly, check out my Patreon or come say hi on one of my Twitch streams at twitch.tv slash blindirl. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.